Hey everyone, welcome to PC Perspective. Today we're going to look at another new graphics card from AMD. We are dropping the X and going straight to the R9 290. Now here's the secret. Of these two graphics cards I'm holding up, one of them is a 290 and one of them is a 290X. Can you tell? I can because I have labels on them, but otherwise, no, you wouldn't be able to tell them apart. And as it turns out, there's a lot of reasons that you won't be able to tell a 290 apart from a 290X. Uh, if we look at the picture here, we can see that literally it is the exact same shroud, it's the exact same cooler, uh, you've got the same blower design, uh, it's still a dual slot card, it's still a, a, an 8 pin plus 6 pin power connector, no crossfire connections. Uh, if you look at the output configuration, you still have two dual link DVI, a full size HDMI, a full size display port, everything is literally identical across these cards, which is uh, you know, good and bad depending on what your take was of the 290X. Now, stepping down from the 290X to the 290, it's a little bit of a performance hit and specification hit. If we look at the diagram of, uh, logical diagram of the die shot, you'll see here that what we are missing is these four dark areas at the bottom. They actually have removed four compute units from the GPU. Now, to be clear, AMD won't specify if it's one from each like I diagrammed here or two from two different shader engines or all of them from one shader engine. For some reason, they were being a little bit coy about what specifically was happening. But in terms of shader counts and texture unit counts, you are missing four of these compute units. The result is this specification sheet that shows you really quite minimal uh, even specification differences between the 290 and the 290X. Just look at these left-hand columns here. They're both the same GPU, 6.2 billion transistors. The uh, maximum engine clock, maximum GPU clock, goes from 1 gigahertz to 947 megahertz. And then you get your spec differences here in terms of uh, stream processors, which uh, 256 fewer stream processors on the 290 and 16 fewer texture units. But the ROPs are the same, uh, your texture fill rate goes down, but the ROPs are the same, the pixel fill rate is the same, the Z stencil units are the same. Still a 512-bit memory bus, still 4 gigs of GDDR5 memory at 5 gigabits per second. So very similar performance in a lot of ways and just 10% uh, or so specification stream processor difference uh, going from the 290X to the 290. Now this is um, where I'll, I'll go ahead and I'll give away the big surprise for this video. The price of this card is really what's astounding. It's $399 compared to $549 for the 290X. So keep that in mind as we progress through here and look at performance benchmarks and numbers. Uh, one quick note, AMD changed very late in the game uh, the, the performance of this card by adjusting fan speeds. So if you look at the screenshot from the Catalyst Control Center, you will see that uh, the maximum fan speed is set at 47%. When we originally got the card, it was set at 40%. The 290X default configuration is 40% in its quiet mode and 55% in the Uber mode. So boosting the maximum fan speed from 40 to 47 improves performance by allowing it to sustain a maximum clock speed for a longer period of time while also increasing power consumption and increasing noise. So there's going to be definitely uh, some trade-off there. But keep in mind that 47% fan speed on the 290 versus the 40% fan speed on the 290X, again, as we look through these results. So here's our first graph looking at Battlefield 3, uh, 2560 by 1440. This is kind of your observed frame rate over time. Uh, the green bar at the bottom here is the GTX 770, which is $329. The uh, black line there is the R9 290, which is $399. Uh, the orange line is the R9 290X, which is $549. And then of course the GTX 780 is the pink line that is $499. So there's all kinds of prices and stuff happening here, but what you can kind of see is that the orange, black, and pink lines are all kind of bunched together. The GTX 770, not really in the same performance discussion as the other three cards. Same thing, only over here we're looking at it in frame times. No variance issues at all with any of these cards, still single GPU options. And then here's where we can kind of see where you would guess your average frame rate. So if you look at this 50th percentile on the left hand side of this, this is pretty close to almost, almost exactly the average frame rate of, uh, of Battlefield 3 at 25 by 14 with these cards. And you'll see the orange line of the 290X is just a little bit faster than the R9 290, 
which is basically tied with the GTX 780. So one result here shows one, maybe two frames per second average frame rate difference between the 290 and the 290X, and then an equal performance level between the 290 in NVIDIA's GTX 780. Crisis 3, we'll look at this. This is actually a 4K resolution. And you can see here, again, this time the green line is the GeForce GTX 780 versus the uh, black line of the 290 and the orange line of the 290X. Similar performance levels, no frame time issues there. But if we look at the average performance here, notice that the 290 is actually a little bit ahead of the 290X. That's kind of weird, right? This $150 less expensive graphics card is performing just one notch, maybe one frame per second on average better than the 290. Why is this happening? Uh, it has, again, comes down to the 47% fan speed versus the 40% fan speed maximums of these two cards. So the 290 is running at possibly a higher average clock than the 290X is. So even though it has a little bit of a deficit in terms of shader count, if it's running those shaders a little bit higher speed, you're going to see this difference here. And again, if you look at the graph, the 780 is a couple of frames per second lower than that as well. So, um, you know, the, the, the R9 290 is definitely proving to be an impressive part. And uh, here's one set of graphs as well that shows uh, 290 Crossfire versus 780 uh, SLI. You can see here in Metro Last Light that 2560 by 1440, the results are, are pretty good for AMD. We still have a little bit higher frame time variance with the 290s than we do with the 780s. Compare the orange line to the blue line there. Uh, but, but much improved over where it was six months ago and what I would consider to be a, a pretty good experience here. If you look at average frame rates, again, the R9 290 Crossfire is definitely faster than the 780s in SLI. Um, so we have a whole lot more power consumption numbers, benchmarks, uh, a lot of gaming benchmarks at 4K, Crossfire, single card in our review. Uh, so if you're, if you're interested in more, more games, Bioshock, Skyrim, uh, Grid 2, all those games are included as well in our full review, which you can, you can get in the link below. In terms of power consumption, though, it shouldn't be a surprise if the 290 is performing as close to the 290X as it is, maybe even a little bit higher. It's power consumption is pretty close to matching it there. The GTX 780 does have a big advantage here in terms of lower power consumption, but it's also behind more cases than it's ahead in terms of performance as well. So that comes into the equation. If we look at sound levels, this is the one area where the 290 is at a, is at a severe disadvantage. Even the R9 290, which is our top set of graphs there, compared to the R9 290X, which is supposed to be the flagship part, higher end, higher performance, the 290 is creating quite a bit more noise. And that is because of the 47% maximum fan speed versus 47%. So the 7% gap here is creating, you know, more than 5 dBA, which is quite a noticeable amount difference in sound level, while the GTX 780 and the GTX 770 are down at the 35 dBA level, which um, is, is significantly, significantly quieter. So the 290, AMD was willing to sacrifice sound level for performance in order to make sure the R9 290 was as impressive as it could be for gamers and enthusiasts out there. You know, uh, kind of a summation of the benchmark results that you'll find on the side are that the 290 is faster than the GTX 780, almost across the board, except for a couple of uh, unique instances. And it's also very, very, very close to the 290X. Close enough that uh, if you take the 290, and increase that fan speed up even just a little bit more, I think you're going to cross into it. I know some people will comment that, hey, you didn't test the R9 290X and it's Uber mode, which is 55% fan speed, so you're not really giving it a fair comparison to the 290. I would argue that we just tested these out of the box. This is what you get if you just take a 290X off the shelf and take a 290 off the shelf, plug them in and run benchmarks. And if you do increase the fan speed to 55%, on um, the, the 290X, you can increase your fan speed to 55% or 60% on the 290 and likely get similar performance gains as well. I think overall the AMD Radeon R9 290 with four gigs of frame buffer at $399 is really gonna put some screws to NVIDIA. We thought this was happening with the 290X. They released at 549, which was undercutting the 780 at that time. NVIDIA dropped the prices of the 780 and the 770. So now the GT GTX 780 is sitting at 500 bucks. This card's selling for $400 starting today, while also 
uh, being, so it's performing better than the 780 while costing $100 less. I mean, there's not much more you can ask for that. For people that have concerns about sound levels, they have problems running their GPU at 95C, eh, maybe you have some questions in mind. NVIDIA definitely has the advantage with uh, running a three-game bundle today, plus you can get that discount on Shield. There, there are some other things to consider, but I think it's hard not to walk away from our time with the Radeon R9 290 and just come away impressed and think that this is the best performance per dollar graphics card an enthusiast can get today. We have a whole lot more analysis and discussion in our review, so be sure to check that out at PCPer.com. Thanks for watching.